Hey everybody, JCB here at The Awesomest, and you're watching The Awesomest, Awesomest, Awesome List. One common question I get asked all the time is how I can afford to go to Six Flags Magic Mountain so often. And I always answer the same way. I, I don't really go that often, but when I do go, I don't spend a lot of money. I mean, unless it's a special occasion or something. Amusement parks are notorious for being overpriced. So when I say there's a way to go without spending all that much money, I mean I can usually spend about $60 on a trip of just my wife and I. Whether or not that sounds affordable varies from person to person and situation to situation, but there are ways to go to Six Flags Magic Mountain for a lot cheaper than you might think, if you know how. Now these tips aren't going to be the most efficient way of visiting the park and not all of these options are going to be available for everyone, but if you've never been to the park just because it's too damn expensive and you really want to go, there are ways to go to Six Flags for a lot cheaper than you might think. The major expenses of visiting Six Flags are threefold. First you have the cost of gas to get to and from the park, as well as parking. Second, you have the cost of food and drink while you're at the park. And third, you have the cost of admission itself. So in no particular order, here are my top five tips for visiting Six Flags Magic Mountain on the cheap. Number five, bum a ride, or at least carpool. Transportation to and from the park is really only an issue if you live far away. If you happen to live in Valencia, you just have to kind of drive down the street and then it doesn't really matter. But if you're like me and you live further away, you have to take the cost of gas into the equation. So if you have some friends who also want to go to the park, a great way to save some money is to offer to drive and ask for gas money. Or better yet, if you're absolutely broke, you can go when someone else you know is already going and then just kind of bum a ride. If you do decide to bum a ride from a friend, you should at least try to be a good friend and offer to help pay for gas money, or at the very least, offer to drive. I live about an hour and 47 minutes away from the park, so if someone wanted a free ride but they were offering to drive, I would totally go for that. Number four. Get a season pass, you dingus. I am a firm believer in the benefits of a season pass. Heck, if you plan on going more than once this season, it pays for itself. And you may be thinking, season passes are expensive, and this was supposed to be about going to Six Flags without spending a lot of money. But that's the best part. You can get a season pass membership for just a few dollars. So if you really want to go right now and you don't have a whole lot of money, you can sign up for the membership option, pay the first month, and go to Six Flags for just a couple of dollars. It really is a great deal, and then you have a season pass, which is awesome. But again, if you don't have a season pass, and you don't think you'll go often enough to make the membership option worth it, you can always go on a bring a friend day with a friend who does have a season pass. Although I must stress that the bring a friend days are the busiest days of the year and I actually avoid them because they're just so damn busy you can't get on any rides. But if you've never been to the park and you really don't want to spend any money, this is the way to go to the park for free. Number three. How to save on parking. Every year the price of parking seems to go up, and there are some season pass options that give you free parking, so if you can afford to get that one, definitely do it. But if you can't, there are a few ways you can bring the cost down. There are lots of parking lots and even some public streets within walking distance of the park entrance. So make sure you read all the signs so that you're not parking illegally. Also, I'm not entirely sure the businesses would be thrilled about the fact that you left your car parked there all day, but they haven't posted any signs discouraging it yet. One final thing to consider is that after walking around the theme park all day, going that extra mile and a half to find your car is gonna feel like an eternity. Number two. Drinks on the cheap. Take it from me, staying hydrated is not optional. It is mandatory. Whenever you hear an otherwise healthy person complaining the day after they went to a theme park that they're just exhausted, that's because they didn't stay properly hydrated. But drinks, like everything else in a theme park, are crazy overpriced. So what do you do? How do you stay hydrated on a budget? Well, the free option is water fountains. Six Flags does have a lot of water fountains sprinkled throughout the park, though for some reason some of them taste better than others. Most of the water tastes fine, but the one by the DC Universe specifically tastes like pool water, so just keep that in mind. You could always buy a souvenir bottle, which gives you free refills every time you visit the park. Now, there is a little bit of upfront cost with this. It costs about the same if you bought four or five regular drinks in the park, and you'll probably need a lot more than that to stay hydrated, so it is still a deal. Also, if you only buy one of these and you have a group of two or more, you can take turns filling it up with the drink you want, and then everybody stays hydrated for the price of one bottle. As I've explained before, there are two types of these souvenir bottles. One is unlimited free refills, no strings attached, and the other requires a wristband. If you have the free and clear version, just hand the empty bottle off to your friend and they can fill it up. If you do have to get the one with the wristband, just decide which person in your group is going to be the designated refill person and have them wear the wristband. Alternatively, you could borrow a friend's souvenir bottle and then you don't have to pay anything and you still get the free refills. 
or you can probably find previous season's souvenir bottles at secondhand stores. I personally see them all the time for less than a dollar. Buy one of those and the park will let you get free water refills from any food stand. And trust me, the water at the food stand is way better than the water in the water fountains. Number one, food. The largest expense for most people at the park is definitely food, and as I've said in my past videos, the food at Magic Mountain is pretty terrible. If you do insist on eating food at the park, I suggest the fire roasted corn and the soft pretzels. Those are both pretty good. If you're a part of a group of four, you can get a pretty good deal if you buy the family option offered at most of the food stands. Typically it's $40 and contains enough food for four people, which of course works out to $10 a person, which isn't bad. You can also go outside the park and get lunch at Wendy's or any of the other fast food places near the park, but if you're paying for parking, be prepared to pay again. The other option is to take advantage of the picnic area in the parking lot. I actually mentioned this option in my very first Six Flags Magic Mountain video, which a lot of people misunderstood to think you could bring food in the park, but you can't. Instead, what you have to do is pack all the makings of a lunch into an ice chest and leave that in your car while you enjoy your day. Then make yourself a sandwich in the picnic area at lunchtime. In theory, if you go as a free guest of your friend, or you already have a season pass, if you bum a ride from your friend, park for free, drink nothing but water, or already own a souvenir bottle, and eat a picnic lunch in the parking lot, you can go to Six Flags Magic Mountain without spending a dime. Now, not all of these tips are going to be possible for everybody, but just following a few of them can save you a lot of money. Perhaps the simplest rule to saving money when you visit a theme park is just not to buy anything you don't absolutely need. Now before I go, I do want to say thank you to a couple of awesome awesomeites. This guy I ran into at the park was pretty cool and his mom was nice enough to let him appear in the video. It's always nice to meet my fellow awesomeites in person. If you happen to see me at the park, feel free to say hello, tell me what your favorite video of mine is, tell me what your favorite roller coaster is, I love meeting my fellow awesomeites, it's one of my most favorite parts about being a YouTuber. And of course I hope this video helps someone out there save some money. If you know more tips for saving money at Six Flags Magic Mountain, make sure you let me know down below. Also be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as I release new videos every week, and until next time, keep being awesome. When we first arrived, they gave us these vouchers and said to hand them out to any employees who go above and beyond for us that day. Apparently, every employee with a voucher has a chance to win a prize. Well, the park was packed, and so all the employees were pretty busy just trying to get people on the rides as quickly and safely as possible. So I didn't think any of them would have time to go out of their way, and thus we wouldn't really be handing any of those out that day. Toward the end of the day, we went on Jetstream and something happened. At the end of the ride, as the boats are returning to the loading station, they go up sort of an incline, which causes the back of the boat to dip down a little bit. Now, normally this isn't a problem, but on this occasion, the boats kind of got into a little bit of a traffic jam right there at the end of the ride. So our boat actually bumped the boat in front of us, and we were stuck on this sort of incline here. Then of course the boat behind us came up over the top of the back of our boat because we were down so far. This is another boat that had the same sort of thing happen to it as soon as we got off, though ours was much more drastic. The back of our boat was down so far that water was actually pouring over the edges of our boat. And we had our friend Kelsey with us who was all the way at the front of the boat. Uh, she actually thought the boat was sinking. So she alerted one of the ride attendants whose mouth immediately dropped as soon as she saw the predicament we were in.